Welcome back. Have you been s Excellent. Very well. Here is your reward. Steel be-
Hold it right there. Nobody's allowed into Paradise Falls except on slaver business. And I get to decide what qualifies as slaver business. You? I don't think so. You're not really... Let's just say that you wouldn't fit in up there. So why don't you just turn around and head back the way you came? There's two kinds of people who get into Paradise Falls. Slaves and slavers. So unless you're looking to become a slave, piss off. We might be able to work something out, but it won't be cheap. If I vouch for you and you go mess up our groove, it's my ass on the line. I think 500 caps should cover it. What do you say? Thank you. Pleasure doing business with you. Enjoy your visit to Paradise Falls. Friendly warning. Don't act like a jackass. You won't get a second chance. Ain't no reason to stick around here, is there? collars on. Asshole should have known better. I'm busy, so piss off. You got business here? I'm busy, so piss off. You gotta help, you just gotta. I can't keep talking to you, or else he'll shoot me. Quit hassling the merchandise. I can't believe I'm that busy. Let so piss you. off. You got business here? You, you don't exactly look like you belong here. <laughs> Smells Sorry, like bro. Meat. Got nothing to Move say on. to you. Hey, you need guns? I got guns. You need armor? Got that too. So long as you got the caps for them. Yeah, pretty much. Well, the guys usually bring in what they grab on missions. I mean, you always got to kill a few people when you're gathering meat. You know, they've got some guards. The dad thinks he's a hero and pulls a gun, whatever. So they bring that crap in here and trade it. But mostly, the only stuff I get is from these guys. And they keep the good stuff for themselves. Yeah, pretty much. Greedy assholes. I don't know how I'm supposed to pull down a living over here when they don't trade fair. I'd have to have some decent supplies to trade for them. If I have more things that these douchebags want, they'll bring me better stuff to trade. But you know, I'm a one-man operation here. Not like I get out a lot. Pretty much, my business is at the mercy of assholes. Fucking free market, man. Yeah, I know. I could really get this little shithole going if I had some better stuff. First things first, bring me some Chinese assault rifles. People always need them for parts. Twenty should get me going. I'll trade them off and I should be able to improve my stock pretty fast. Well, I can't really kick much away right now. But once I get running, I'll be able to offer you much better stuff. And, of course, as my business partner, you'll get a discount on everything. Well, whatever, man. I don't need to like you to do business with you. If you want to get something going, you know where to find me. Did you need anything else? 
I tell you, for a bunch of dumbass wasters, the boys pull some good stuff off of the new meat. Later. I can't believe that Grouse don't exactly like you. look like you belong here. Jotun. Yes, Jotun. No, it isn't. What do you want? I keep my father safe. It is. A big job. Bye. Catch any good meat lately? I'm busy, so piss off. What the big guy? Sorry, bro, got nothing to say. To Keep Don't walking. think I won't throw your ass in the pants. Hey, Nifty America, it's me, your pre. You like what you see? What? Do Mr. See Eulogy don't like me like? talking to the Johnnies without his permission. Tell me what you see. You must be our prospective customer. I do hope Paradise Falls can accommodate your need. We make no judgments, no assumptions. We understand that it's a harsh world out there, and you do what you must to make it. Now, was there something specific you were interested in? Paradise Falls is here if you need it. You want something? What do I pay you for? Have you seen this out here? Hey, mister! Can you get us out of here? I'm Sammy. I'm from Little Lamplight. Me and Squirrel and Penny. We aren't supposed to be here. We gotta get back home. You gotta help us get out of here. Can't you just shoot them all? Well, I mean, Squirrel thinks maybe he could use the computer in here to turn off the collars. Squirrel's good with computers, and they don't know he made this one work again. But it's a... It, it's not connected or something. Hang on. I'll get Squirrel, and he can tell you what to do. Hey, that's the Mungo. Go talk to him. You're the Mungo that's helping us, huh? Sammy says she wants to know the plan. Well, listen up, Mungo, because it's a good one. I'm super smart. Man, you're cranky. Fine, here's what you do. You go on into the boss guy's room and use his terminal. Get the one in here added to the network. Think you can handle that, Mungo? I told you, it's in the boss guy's room. You gotta sneak in there or something. That's up to you to figure out, Mungo. 
You're really dumb, aren't you? I just told you this is the plan. I don't got another way to do this. Gee, thanks. Don't work too hard, okay? What do you want, school? Something I can help you with. Well then, you and I are a perfect fit. You want to buy slaves, and I want to sell them. There are some prime specimens out there. Have you had a chance to look them over? A very good eye, my friend. Those little ones are good as a long-term investment. They have their own uses as well, I'm sure. They are most definitely up for sale. They're all in excellent physical condition, if that's what you're wondering. A bit stubborn, perhaps. That behavior can be altered over time. What did you want to know? Names? I think Forty has a few nicknames for them. But none of them were very polite. Does it really matter? They're here now, and they're available for purchase. Okay then, let's talk business. Are you sure? It's a shame. But we had a good thing going here. Well, you know where to find us. Paradise Falls is here if you need it. Where? Don't mind eulogy. Daddy don't pay no attention to us. <laughs> you don't exactly... Anything I can help you with? Get your business done and go. You don't exactly look like you belong here. What's up, Mongo? You fixed that terminal yet? All right. You're okay for a Mungo, you know that? So we're one step closer to getting out of here. Well, with the terminal, I can turn off the collars and open up the gate. But they're not gonna just let us walk out of here, you know? There's always at least one guard near the pen. And someone's gotta get rid of him. Since we can't just walk around like we own the place, you're gonna have to do it. You get me? Okay, don't do anything stupid. Hey! Welcome to Paradise Vault. We got a reason to be talking, I... Huh? Yeah, I mean, they pay well enough, I guess. What the hell do you care? Maybe. And maybe it's time to see eulogy about a raise. Oh, sir. Step right on up.
Watch your fire! Don't hit the butcher dice! Warning you again. Leave now. Look out! Hopeless!
A mess. I hope you're brought. Now, next time, try to be worth. You're a mess. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Later. mess. Don't get yourself killed, Mungo. I already shorted out the fence system so our collars won't blow. I bet they won't even notice. We're getting out of we'll, we'll meet you outside if you can make it. This place is terrible, please. You've gotta help us. Freedom! Oh, hey! What? Oh? Ain't got no use for... Ain't got no use... Bye! Hey, wanna see something funny? Ain't had enough to drink, can't go... Now that, that sounds like a plan. I'm a run for it! What do you want? Make it quick, you're blocking my view. I'm watching the patrols. What do you think I'm looking at? They switch it up a little bit every day, but just a little. There has to be some sort of pattern to it. It's just a matter of watching and waiting. Now's our chance. Let's go!
what Look we have. Hey.
helping us, Mungo. You're not so bad for a Mungo. We're going home now. You watch out, okay? Free! You ever make it to Little Wamp White? You come say hi. Okay, you come Mungo? to Little Wamp White sometime, Mungo.
Mister, don't take another step, or we'll blow your fucking head off. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. I'm McCready. I run Little Lamplighter because they made me the mayor, and I don't like strangers or mungos. This is Little Lamplighter. We live here, and we don't need no mungos messing it up. So just take a hike. Why would I tell you anything? God, you're dumb. Hell no! No mungos allowed! Oh yeah? You must like having such a good looking boat. <laughs> you're alright for a mungo. You know that? Why don't you come in? I think we can trust you. Sticky. Sorry, I missed your party. Yeah. There's hey, Mungo. Happy hey, Mungo. This hey, Mungo. Mungo. Look, I don't just let any son of a bitch in my town. I'm taking a risk making an exception for you. So you're welcome in my town. At least until you start screwing up. Once that bullshit starts, you're out on your own again. Good. You better stay that way, Mungo. Organized? Have you walked around this place? Pure anarchy! I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. We can't all stay here forever, so we all gotta leave eventually. And there's not much to look forward to out there. So we have a good time while we're here. And the occasional ruthless little bastard like me makes sure it doesn't fall apart for the other kids. It's not that complex. Any kid could say they want to be mayor here. It's just that most don't want to bother with the responsibility of leading. Most of the time, they last until the kids get tired of them. Then they get kicked out on their ass by the new mayor. One only lasted five minutes. Of course, I've kept this place going strong for three years. To most kids, that makes me mayor for fucking life. Fine by me, I say. People change when they grow up, and we don't trust mungos living down here. So we leave for a place called Big Town before we get to the wall. Kids who grow up fighting and surviving in Lamplight are better trained for the world out there than idiots who are pampered by grown-ups outside. About time. Yeah, that's nice. Scram. Damn, my life station, so see your way out. You know wow, what luck! I'm sticky. Forget these little kids. I'll take you to Big Town where the mungos, I mean where the grown-ups live. 
I'm headed there now. Nah, I'm a grown-up now. I can handle myself. There's no reason to waste your time with the kiddies at Little Lamplight. They'll steal your caps when you aren't looking. So let's go to Big Town. I can show you the way. I'm not allowed in Little Lamplight anymore. Only people under 18 get to live in Little Lamplight. So when you're done with those little kids, we can go to Big Town together. I'll wait outside for you. Other rules. Wow, you're big. I mean, bigger than most people down here. I mean, bigger than most people down here that we don't shoot for being down here. So how'd you get down here without getting shot? Am I supposed to shoot you? Because you know, I'd rather not. But if I'm supposed to, then okay. That's good. They don't like me having my gun in town, so I gotta turn it in first. So if I had to shoot you, you'd have to wait a bit. My name's Zip. I don't think that's short for anything. Because I don't know what it'd be short for. Zippy. Zipperick. Zipthoomoo. So yeah, it's good to meet you, big kid. Maybe you've got big stuff on top of you. Do you have any nuka cola, maybe? Yes? Please? Why Zip? Or why do I have a nickname at all? I mean, why don't people just call me Ricky? Or Yancey? Or Eustace P. Vanderbagger the third? I mean, they say it's because I'm so fast. But that doesn't make sense because I don't think I'm all that fast. It's just... that they're all slow. I guess it's just one of those mysteries that'll never really get answered. Sort of like how people made bubbles in nuka cola. Say, got any cola? Yeah. I got lots of trade. We got no nuka. You're not getting nothing. No way. Okay. See you next time, mister. Well, if it isn't the magnificent Mungo, what now? It's so dull. Practically nothing ever tries to come through the back gate anymore, so I never get to shoot anyone. I wish I was at the front gate, but RJ specifically put me back here. Up front, at least there's a chance I can shoot some unwanted visitors. Which could have included you, Mungo. <laughs> could have been a lot of reasons. Maybe you sounded like a monster in all that darkness. Maybe you had a weapon drawn and looked like a raider. Maybe I just decided I didn't like your stupid Mungo face. I don't need to explain myself to you, Mungo. Shut up and get lost. In fact, don't you ever bother me about something as stupid as nicknames again. About time. Oh, hey, excuse me, hey. Oh, hey, what's happening? Something fun? Later. Heard anything good? Well, technically, I'm patrolling and keeping the peace. Mostly, that involves making sure people are happy and not getting into trouble. You can't very well keep the peace if you've already lost it, see? So, bam! Jokes! Want to hear one? Prepare to be amused. Knock knock. Noah. Hey, that's good. I was just gonna say, Noah, place where I can get some food. Gee, thanks. I have to admit, most of them aren't really funny. At least not ha ha funny. They're more like a tradition. Most of them were passed down from this book we found down back called Vault Boy's Big Book of Laughs for Kids. They're not really funny, but something about hearing them is a little comforting, you know? Oh, we've got lots of funny incidents. Like when Sammy shot the raider who thought he was a girl. That sort of stuff. But we don't really get a lot of news stories from outside. The scav teams spend all their time hidden, so they don't get much news, see? I'd sure like to hear more tales from the great big outdoors myself. Actually, if you hear any, feel free to tell me. Oh, really? Tell me about it. So you're like a three-legged dog then? Looking for your lost paw? <laughs> anyway, what happened next? That makes sense, I suppose. A good story can take a while to put together, you know. Well, when people started calling Nikki by his new name, I needed one too, see? If you're twins, it just doesn't cut it to be called Nick Knack and Sue. Alright, bye! Hi! Watch it! How are Thanks you Thanks for getting Penny and Squirrel okay, back. And Sammy too, I guess. Watch it!
Oh, hey, excuse me. Great. RJ went in another pair of choppers to eat up all our food. Well, as long as you don't give me any crap about how I prepare your grub, I guess you'll be okay. So tell me, what do you think of cave fungus and watery mushroom sauce? You got that right. After our regular meals, I bet some of us would give that a shot. If we had a Brahmin down here, that is. Listen, my name's Eclair. Don't laugh. And I'm in charge of the food down here. We haven't got much, but I do what I can to spice it up. If you need a meal down here, just talk with me. You'll hardly even know you're eating cave mold. Honestly, when we can't scavenge some from outside, we mostly scrape it off the walls and skim it off the water. No, really. Most of our food comes from fungus that grows in these caves. It's not so bad when you get used to it. And we don't have much choice. At least it's filling. So we don't have to eat much of it. But man, oh man, it tastes terrible. It's pretty hard to find. And I hear it doesn't grow in other caves. I don't know why it's here, but without it, we'd be goners. Think fungus just grows on trees? No, it grows in caves. Ugh. Knock Knock came up with that one once, and now it's stuck in my head forever. Doesn't take any work to get it to grow down here. All I have to do is collect and prepare it. Mostly, I try to get the stink off it. They say the fungus grows in the pools where the first lamplighters dumped the mungos. That's about the most they ever helped us. I don't know how true that is, but I know sometimes the scav team comes back with this strange meat. It tastes terrible, but the fungus loves it. I don't know where they find that meat. But if you could bring some back, I'd be glad to trade fungus for it. Of course, McCready'd have to okay it. Sure. Well, I didn't get the nickname for being fat and full of cream. That's what you're asking. Back when I was on the scav team, I found some pages from an old cookbook. Sometimes I try them out. Just for the record, don't try making an eclair out of cave fungus. The taste sticks with you, and not in a good way. About time, man. This mold isn't getting any tastier. I mean, hey! trouble in here, got it? I ain't having no shit butts making trouble. Boo hoo, you big baby. You're still a mungo, and I still don't like mungos. You want to party or something? You go pay some mungos to be your friends, and then they can talk all about how great you are. How's that? What do I look like? Yeah, 
I'll bet you've heard all about the fungus in my cavern. But yeah, the cave fungus, sure. It's good for food and medicine. And it's the main fucking reason we've stayed alive down here. So, you want a slice of that gray-green gold, huh? I think maybe we could come to an arrangement. What are you offering? Well, it had lightened the load for our scab team a lot. Since you're pretty much one of us, here's the deal. For every piece of strange meat or buff out you bring in, you'll be repaid with one cube of fungus. You couldn't ask for a better deal. Talk with Eclair for the strange meat. Or to Lucy about the buff out. They've got uses for them. Just fucking go, okay? Well, here's something I don't see every day. A new face and little lamplight. A bit big for one of our kids, but you seem all right. What's your story down here? That was you? Well, my most sincere thanks then. You brought my sister Penny back to me, and I couldn't ask more than that. I'm Joseph, and if there's ever anything I can do for you, just name it. As the oldest kid in town, I spent most of my time teaching. But I do what I can to keep the kids clean and fresh-faced. Say, if you're ever looking for a haircut, I'd be glad to offer my services. You only have to ask. Stay sharp. Hey, you. What's that? Wanna hear a story? Sure. So, the main character of our story You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! Oh, I forgot I had that on. It was for my birthday. Here, you take it. I don't want it anymore. You have? I mean, of course you have! It's an awesome place! Well, enough talking. Let's get a move on. You are taking me to Big Town, right? All right! Yeah! Big Town, here we come! there. Come on. Yippee! Watch the wastes. Bye. Yeah! I made it to Big Town. Big Town. Hooray! Now I just need to find Red. You got a problem?
We got... Isn't our local scavenger for a month? That seems a pretty rare piece of equipment, this. Good find. How'd you like your payment? There. Enjoy them in good health. You'd better believe it. I haven't seen a suit like this in a long time. And what would you like for this little surprise? My, my, my. You certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. Now, what brings you all the way out here? Honestly, there's nothing much out here. Looking for sand? Rocks? We have plenty of that. You're welcome to look around this area, of course. Don't let me dissuade you. I'm just trying to save you some time. My husband built this place way out here for a reason. Rest his soul. Well, that's kind of you to say. Yes, he's gone. 
After he built this place, we spent many happy years together. We decided to cut off contact with the outside world and just depend on each other for comfort and company. Oh, oh, goodness, no. I have a supply caravan that passes here maybe once a week. I trade with them for whatever I need, and I stock up enough till they return. Besides shelter? Well, I offer something in the way of entertainment. I play songs on my homemade violin, and people trade me goods. If not in person, I use my husband's old radio set. The men in the caravan say it keeps their morale up on lonely nights in the wasteland. Oh, you are a clever one. Yes, that's exactly the problem that I have with it. It doesn't quite play all of the notes correctly, and I have to constantly tinker with it. Yes, my husband was very proud of the setup. He tinkered with that thing for years to get it working. I've tried to use it to get whatever I need, but I've never gotten a reply. But now that you mention it, um, yes, there is. My trading depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play, no way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. Yes, very sad, isn't it? Sad to think that no more musical instruments will ever be made the old way ever again. <sighs> well, fortunately, I know where perhaps the last real violin in the world exists. If you give me your word that you will recover it, I will tell you more. You have a point. Perhaps I've been neglecting needs that you might have and being selfish. I have a small amount of ammunition that my husband left behind. A box of odds and ends. I don't think I've opened it in years. If you do this for me, you're welcome to take whatever you need. Oh, I don't think I've been this happy in years. As promised, here's the key to the ammunition box. It's right under the radio table. Before you leave, I have some information that may help you. At least a place to begin. It all starts with my great-great-grandmother Hilda back in 2077, before the bombs fell. It certainly is a long time. That precious instrument has been through a lot. Anyway, Hilda was quite a special woman, classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. Vault Tech was always promoting the vaults being used for the preservation of the arts and all that nonsense. Hilda couldn't pass on a chance to meet many of the other musical talents of the world, so she accepted their invitation. Then the bombs fell, the vault was sealed, and my family never heard from her again. She kept it in a special pressurized case. Inside the case is the perfect temperature and humidity for the instrument. If the case is still functioning, the Stradivarius would be in perfect shape. Hilda Stradivarius was named the Swa Stradivarius. All of them had names. That's what I want you to get. That's the catch. I have no idea where it is. I'd suggest making your way to Vault Tech headquarters in the D.C. ruins. That would be a good place to begin. Good luck! Be careful. I don't want to be responsible for getting you killed.
Oh, my word, is that what I think it is? Oh, my goodness gracious. Seems like you've been gone forever. Please tell me you have good news. Oh, my goodness, I must see it, please. Oh, my, it's more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. I can't thank you enough. I wish I had something to give you, a more suitable reward for all your efforts. All I can give you is the frequency to my radio set. Tune in whenever you feel like listening to the strains of an old woman's violin playing. Well, well, look who the cat dragged. Oh, don't be silly. I record everything I play on the nice machines built into my husband's old radio gear. That way you can hear the music any time you want, and this old woman can get some well-needed beauty sleep. Much better lately, thanks for asking. With the return of the Swa Stradivarius, everything has changed. It's like a long-lost family member has come home. Well, I suppose I could. They aren't my pieces of music by any stretch of the imagination, though. You make a good point. I'm no spring chicken, so one day I'll be gone. Oh my, what if I'm the last person on the planet to know these pieces of music? What if all the recordings have been destroyed? To lose such beautiful music would be a shame. Well, I only need two things, my noggin and some music paper. No, I sure don't. I need the music paper to properly record the notes. If I just wrote on anything, it may not look standard enough to teach everyone in the future to read from it properly. You think you can bring some to me? Well, thank you. You've done so much for me already, I just don't know what else to say. If you get the paper, head back here in time. There is no rush. I'm afraid I don't. I'm surprised you didn't find any in Vault 92, knowing that it was a place where musicians used to live. I would ask every merchant and just search the wasteland. Perhaps one day you'll be in luck. Thanks for keeping an old lady company. All of us here thank you for everything you've done. For us, for the wastes. We pulled together and got you this. It's the best we could do. Please take it, with our thanks. Certainly, it's the least I could do after all you've done. You came in here on your own power. I try Men, women, and children of the earth, come forth to gather and behold the power of Adam. Let those who dwell Well, look who the cat dragged in. My word! You actually found some real music paper. I didn't even think it possible. Yet, here it is. You've really outdone yourself this time. I knew getting the Stradivarius was a challenge, but this is just incredible. This is all too much. You deserve more than just a pat on the back. Ah, I'm Thank you. You're welcome here any time. 
Consider my house as a safe haven if you're ever in the area. Now, let me get writing. So much to do.